Welcome to Eat Your Backyard and the first episode of Pick It, Plant It, Eat It. In this episode, I'm speaking with Ben Thacker about his fine Jamaican sorrel specimens. But I'm going to start out by giving you a little EB wiki on the Jamaican sorrel itself, which is a fascinating and really, I'm finding out, wonderful plant. Before we get started talking to Ben, let's get into what are some things we should know about the what they call the Roselle plant, Roselli plant. Jamaican sorrel is a very common name. Sorrel is really the type of drink that they commonly make with it. Where do you find this plant? Well, it's found in Asia, Africa, Australia, certainly Latin America, the Caribbean, basically all over. And it's used for a lot of things. Uh, it's used in chutneys. It's generally seen as a vegetable. The flowers can be eaten. The leaves can be eaten. And uh, the leaves, I believe, after having tried them, I'll try them in this upcoming video, they are outstanding. And they're eaten actually as a salad. So this is a big commercial crop. It's also a delicious, easy to grow really addition, I think, to most of the yards, since it is considered to be both an annual and a perennial. Now, there are some other very interesting features about this, and some of them have to do with what you can make with this plant, this fruit. Uh, it has a natural pectin in it, which allows it to be made with jams quite easily without adding anything other than the fruit itself and some sugar, perhaps. Uh, they make this beverage with it. I'll leave a link in the description to a good recipe, but I'll also include my recommended recipe. Uh, they do have some information online about it being used as herbal, herbal medicine, a high blood pressure treatment, but it really didn't seem to be uh, conclusive, but it's great if you have a good experience with it. One thing to point out first about this plant is that it is a hibiscus. It is a hibiscus bush, woody bush shrub. And as such, I believe it is susceptible to the same kinds of issues any hibiscus might have, maybe some susceptibility to aphids, things like that. But typically they grow so fast they will grow through it, and if you keep them fertilized enough, typically they do okay, and there are some natural solutions to dealing with that. Okay, now let's get right into it. Talk to Ben Thacker about what he has to say about the beautiful, stunning, red Jamaican sorrel. All right, so we're here with Ben. How's it going, guys? Yeah, thanks for uh, being willing to talk with me about this. I am actually really excited about learning about the Jamaican sorrel. And um, I didn't actually know about this plant until maybe a week ago when you told me about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I saw it growing here. So I come to it kind of ignorant to what it's all about. And I'd like to know how to grow it in my yard. I'm only, you know, half a mile away from here. So I'm sure I can grow it. First off, that's one reason why we like it, and it right. thrives in the heat, so we normally grow it over the summer. Okay. Um, it's coming to fruit now um, at the end of the summer growing season, and we're harvesting our calyxes, that's what you call these red flower bud things, and this is after they've been pollinated and after the flower comes out, which is normally in the morning, um, they get nice and thick, and then you can, you can get in there and hands are really dirty, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> these little, the side parts is what you eat, and it's nice and sour and crunchy, and uh, you know, there's a bunch of different culinary uses for it. Yeah. I saw um, I saw one article on the internet, they said it was the Florida cranberry. Florida cranberry, yeah. No, I'm not sure Florida gets to take it over. <laughs> it's already the it's Jamaican Florida. sorrel. Yeah, sure, well it's Florida <laughs> Roselle. Uh, Roselle. Officially, in the agriculture world. Okay. And. Uh, I was corrected on that by my good friend Chris French, who actually gave me the seeds to grow these oh, off of his So farm. you grew these from seeds? These were from seeds. This is the second generation. And so I got the seeds from Chris two seasons ago. I went down to check out his fields at his old farm. And it was a nice brisk morning when we were harvesting radishes and he happened to have a jar of sorrel <laughs> seeds uh, sitting around. And he asked for some, so he gave me some. And I grew them that spring Wow. in West Palm at a project I was doing. and then. 
harvested a bunch, we made jam, uh, among other things, and then saved a bunch of seed. So some of these plants, we're going to leave them to dry up on the stalk so we can get the seeds out. Okay, because, I was wondering that. Yeah, at this point, um, the seed pods are green. So, you know, you look in there and the seed pods are green, and there's, the seeds aren't, they're not ripe yet. They're just green. Yeah. But this part's full of pectin. So you actually don't have to add pectin if you're making jam out of this stuff. That is so cool. So it's really neat. Yeah. So it's just sugar and a bunch of those. You don't even, well, I guess you need sugar. I don't know, she would know. Yeah, you don't <laughs> need sugar. You can, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, go natural. I tend to kind of skimp on that, but, uh, but hey. probably you do. Um, but, uh, but it has the pectin in there. So that's cool. cool. Can you eat the whole thing? This is something I was curious I about. I saw someone eat one the other day. Yeah, the seeds the, and all? The seeds and all, but it, <laughs> yeah. I think they didn't, they didn't say it was like super Too yummy. Much? Yeah. The, really? the outside is the part that you eat normally. And, and really, it's more commonly used to prepare um, jams, like I said, and juices. Yeah. And I think the number one thing uh, would be hibiscus tea. Oh, yeah. But, uh, and so Jamaica, you... means Jamaica in Spanish. Oh. And so I was corrected because I thought the cranberry hibiscus was what they used for that for the longest time. But it turns out, again, my friend Chris, who knows about these things, corrected me on it, and this is what they use for it. Um, but the sorrel is actually, in Jamaica, that's the name of the drink that they make. And it's a, it's a okay. Christmas time drink, like a spiced kind of um, drink with rum, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of want to try it. Yeah, well, now I have a reason to drink rum. <laughs> I need. I didn't exactly. need one. <laughs> it's the holidays. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it comes right, right around the holidays, so it's like a Christmas time uh, Super cool, man. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't wait to, yeah, grow some but, and make yeah, that drink. some seeds. Um, I, I would I love to. I still have some seeds from last year, but I think, you know, Excellent. March, April is really kind of the time when, when we planted them. Okay. Um, and they, they grow all summer. The, the sooner you plant them in, in the rainy season, I guess, the bigger they get. Right. We have some that we planted later, and they just they started flowering smaller. Okay. Uh, yeah, they said it can get about like eight feet tall. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, some of, I had some before growing a little bigger. The wind tends to knock. Yeah, them. they're These real are, flexible. This is like about eight foot tall, I think. It, they said it was woody, but it doesn't look that woody to me. And the stalk is red, bright red. Bright red. Yeah, and um, so cool. I believe I read that there's certain fibers in the stalk that are useful in um, textiles and stuff. I think they're called yeah. fast fibers. And so somehow nice. they like separate the fibers and you can, they're strong and you can use them for weaving. Yeah, that is one you can see, it's kind of cool. But um, yeah, from what I've read, it, it was- yeah, you can see the fibers there actually. That's pretty cool. Yeah, oh yeah. I think um, in Sri Lanka, Cordage for example, makes good cordage. Cordage, yeah. <laughs> but the leaves are also edible. And I think in, I think it's Sri Lanka that I read that the, it's a dish that they make out of the leaves. Um, they're tangy, you can try them. I mean, nice. it's just, Around Someone said you're not supposed to eat a ton of them because it might have oxalates or something. Mm. Oh bit. wow! Boy, that leaf is good. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's tangy. Um, wow! It's different than the fruit. Yeah, Holy moly! You know what that yeah. tastes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, that tastes like um, like clover to me. You ever had like sweet mm -hmm. clover? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they call that sorrel too, though, don't they? I guess. There's right. like the one that looks like a clover leaf, right? Uh, I don't know. That's a little sour. Could be. There's other plants that are called sorrel. Like there's French sorrel, which is a, a leaf and it's lemony too. Isn't that like too. just for like plant, for feed sorrel? Is that, there's there a, might be. Um, I don't but know. I, know like I've I thought I heard it, that as term. a culinary thing before, I believe. Um, but so the real name is Hibiscus sabdarifa. It's a hibiscus. Hibiscus sabdarifa. Yep. Um, I don't know what else. So it tends to get, when it looks like that, that's supposed to be like an iron deficiency. Oh. These, uh, in this particular spot, seem to be mostly... I thought it was good. just fall colors. <laughs> yes, it kind of looks like that. It's like, oh, look at that. It might cool be an indication that it's sort of the end of the life cycle too, but if that happens earlier on where it gets kind of weird and discolored and stuff, it's supposed to be iron, and so you can, you can amend you would, that pretty easily. You would supplement it with like a... Like a blood meal or blood know, meal. foliar iron spray or something. An iron spray. To, you know, organic stuff, whatever you can get. Um, the blood meal is high in iron. What would you, okay, for so for people who don't live in Florida and want to try to grow it indoors, is there any advice you give them for? Um, it'd probably be the summertime for you guys, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so. You'd say you know, still grow them outside? I mean, I don't know. 
I think my guess is that it would be sort of leggy inside. And it, yeah. You know, I'm not sure if it would fruit or not. Maybe. Right, because um, it's already pretty big. It's hard to say, and it's 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 a pretty plant throughout the rest of the season, but it really yeah. is more impressive now when it's you know in bloom right. and, and it has all the calyxes on it and stuff. It does seem like a plant that would want to just be outdoors. Yeah, like you said, in loose soil, some sandy type of soil. It seems to thrive in sort of marginal soil, and um, we don't really do too much to it. Most of we we top dress with mulch, so it's beach sand with mulch on top. Basically. No kidding, just mulch on top of this regular beach sand. So that's how we plant everything, pretty much. Just wow. plant it in whatever's there, and then yeah, yeah, you know, mulch and, meaning you know fresh and tree trim. You don't find you have to apply a lot of like remediation for bugs and stuff here, do you? Do you anything? Um, I you don't do be, any. I don't do any. None. Um, <laughs> but the, it's, you know, the biodiversity kind of promotes that in itself a lot. Of, you know, there's, there's insects I've never seen before no. showing up. <laughs> yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. Um, yep. I don't know what else to add to it. Uh, I mean, for the indoor thing, I'd be curious if anybody tries it. Yeah, like, well, hey, uh, in the comments, by the way, I know, like, it's cool because a lot of the people who watch these videos are from other countries, India, Philippines, etc. Uh -huh. And, uh, Maybe they can teach us. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They share these things, yeah. uses of the plants. Yeah, and, definitely. Like, the banana flower was one of them. Yeah. Uh, like, people saying, like, don't waste those banana flowers. You know, in the Philippines, we eat every banana yeah. flower. There's, yeah. like, a delicacy. I've seen, um, in Hawaii, some guys using those to make this fermented plant juice, like the Korean, um, like, fertilizer juice. Oh, really? Yeah. It, that was a neat process. They ferment, you know, they take the banana flowers and slice them up thin and I think they add brown sugar or something to it and ferment it all in these pots. <laughs> and then that's their fertilizer. And, yeah. You know, that's the type of thing that I do uh, try to do as much as I can. I've sort of been slacking lately, but we do worm tea. Worm tea? I have tea. a sprayer, a backpack sprayer. Okay. And so I try to, you know, spray like, you know, biology on the plants more than, you know, fertilizer or whatever for example wow so the worm tea is it's full of microorganisms and microfungi and enzymes and all that that it's, is the first time i've even heard of worm tea oh really yeah, yeah. no you should look it up uh, it's i will pretty amazing um there's some you know biology going on under the microscope now too to sort of further the science and, yeah. and all of that dr elaine she's somebody you should look into if i you're will interested in that um i am but uh, but basically with the worm tea you get the castings the worm castings after they've eaten all the fruit scraps like mealworms basically yeah we use red worms wigglers they're composting worms um, wow them in little Tupperwares on the patio and stuff and you wow. separate the castings just poop whatever um, mm -hmm. and put them in a stocking in a big jug of water and we feed molasses and then put um, oxygen aeration overnight. And it basically wow. feeds and proliferates the microbiology, uh -huh. and and then you spray it on everything, on the leaves and on the ground and stuff, and it introduces all those beneficial microbes and microfungi to basically to your plants and to the root systems and stuff, and uh, I find that's the best defense. That's incredible, man, and it lines up exactly with what I uh, what I was taught as a kid, where actually my aunt Mary would uh, grind up garlic. Uh -huh. okay. And onions yeah. from you know that she would get from the garden, and then mix that with dish soap uh -huh. for pesticide. And she would spray that all over everything. Yeah, this sort as of a number like, it's weird. You know, after you spray the worm tea, it, the leaves look kind of glossy and deep green, and you can almost see that they're they're you know can protect themselves better or something. And, and I've always read that uh, yeah. weak plants and malnourished plants are the ones that the pests go for anyway. And so really, you're just pumping them full of good nutrition and, and all the, the me mechanisms to perpetuate that nutrition. Right. Like that's all the exchanges that are happening in the soil around the roots of the plants. That's what's making all the... But if you just yeah, decimate that or, you know, make... Yeah. I mean, like if you spray your whole yard with herbicides and pesticides and you try mm -hmm. to do a garden, right. it's a buffet. <laughs> it's like an organic <laughs> buffet for like every right. bug in town. Yeah. You know? But if you plant like a bazillion different things and there's habitat for every type of critter, then it creates balance kind of quick. Yeah, and, it's amazingly uh, quick. What yeah. do you do? How about for irrigation, just in general? I'm curious about it. Do you irrigate this? No, a lot? Not like on a timer kind of thing. Mm. So we actually have a well, in, which I don't like to use that much because sometimes it shows signs of salinity or whatever it is in the plants. But yeah. During dry spells, I turn it on and we mm. have, I basically have two hard pipes, one on each side. 
with breakout boxes and we put the fan sprinklers and we just kind of move okay. them around and run it to get the soil kind of saturated a little bit. Just as when, needed. When it gets dry for more than a week or two, it's, it gets to be sort of a borderline emergency situation with in this process of building up the soil. Right. We're not quite there right. yet to be able to tolerate that much time. But all the mulch beds, I mean, I really don't water the edges that much at all. If we get rain once or twice a week. So its ability to hold water increases over time, the more rich the soil gets? Is that like That's yeah. really like one of the main benefits of the mulch. And so we went, we've gone through at least 20 of those big chipper truck trucks full of mulch here. Like this area wow. in the middle, is, it was mountains of mulch at least three times. Do you just get the mulch from the, like the county mulch uh, we thing got or like you get the, it like... The, the in... orange truck guys, Asplunge. Oh, okay. So they do the they clear the lines. Kind they of clear thing. the lines and then just drop and off. We got lucky in the beginning because they were doing tropical trail and we got 15 trucks like back to back. Oh, that's and cool. That's what we really needed. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> my buddy has a skid steer, and so we just moved it all around and stuff. And Appreciate stuff. you telling us, teaching us all about the sorrel. I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of comments in the video, and uh, we'll follow up. Let awesome. everybody know. No What's problem. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. All right, guys.